Our service, I'm reckoning on being, fingers crossed, 40 to 45 minutes in length. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is pray together. And uh, so, our Father in heaven, we're here for two reasons. In part, Lord, because it's the day when many of your people come to worship you. And secondly, because of little Enya. And we come, Lord, to bring those two together, to thank you for your love for every one of us and your love in particular for Enya. To be able to celebrate your goodness and to be able to open ourselves to that goodness that we might touch your life with joy and you might touch our lives with your love. Lord, help us to be open to you and bless our time together, we pray, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Now we're going to use the, uh, the screen for the next little bit, and I especially want the younger people to help me with this one, because I'm going to ask you to tell me what you see on the screen. If I don't get any help from the younger ones, I'll turn to the older ones. <laughs> what do you see on the screen? Do you know what those are? <laughs> Just wait. I heard that. Daffodils, you're absolutely right. Daffodils. Now, I've got this little gadget here, and hopefully... Oh, I might... oh yeah, we are. Now, who said... What are these ones, do you know? Daffodils. Daffodils, yes. <laughs> Don't confuse the youngsters. What are these ones? They're flowers. They're tulips. Oh, now I'm going to put... This is going to be hard. It gets harder as we go on. Now, what are these? Do you think you know it, Lorenzo? Say, uh, <laughs> say, crocuses. Well done. <laughs> and how about this one? And they come, they come in two colours. Well, often. So I've, I've included them both. Primroses. Now there is a theme here about these things. What do you think it might be? I mean, I know they're flowers, but it's more than just flowers. Flowers are, what are you going to say, Lorenzo? Uh, they're white and yellow. They're white and yellow, you're right. And they're called primroses. And what do you think the theme might be? What is it, what, <laughs> if inspiration is the right word, what's inspired me to bring these particular pictures this morning? Sp who said spring? I heard it. Thank you, well done. Yes, and, and well, I, there's an extra clue because we're going to move. Now, I've still got a couple more flowers that you'll see at this time. What is this one? Magnolia. And they're all to do with what the, 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 the flowers that are beginning to emerge and will certainly be um, budding in the next, if they're not already there, um, in the next uh, few weeks, certainly. What sort of eggs? Eggs. Would you have them for your breakfast? No. No. Ah, oh, well, Easter bunny eggs. You're kind of, you hang on. You're, does anyone, what type of egg? Are any experts here? The, you reckon they're blackbirds? I think they are as well. So, and, uh, and they're also, aren't they? They're a sign when the birds start to nest and they have their little chicks. It's a sign not only of spring, but something is happening. We've had winter when everything dies down. And the spring comes along and things begin to have new life. How about that? Lorenzo, you missed it. I, I said about Easter eggs. Easter <laughs> well, I wasn't so much thinking, of the, it doesn't look a right shape, does it? Oh, it just, it just, I suppose it's all right. Um, it's a Cadbury's egg. And... Um, and as well as being chocolate, why do we have eggs at Easter time? Does anybody know? Of course, because they're real eggs and just chocolate eggs. Yeah, I, <laughs> and uh, I think most people like chocolate. And, uh, but the egg, of course, is to do with new life. 
that, uh, and it so happens that spring and the story of Easter, they coincide. And we're going to be talking a little bit of, of Easter this morning, but only a tiny bit. Um, so here's just a little bit of an introduction to that. But uh, the egg, of course, it refers, it, 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 it echoes, doesn't it, or reflects the, the eggs of real eggs and, uh, and the fact that they burst open and new life comes out. Footprints. But whose footprints do you think these are? You might know, you've seen it before. <laughs> Where's Kelly gone? Is she still is she here? Oh you're <laughs> you're making sure. So yes, you all know whose footprints these are. These are these are little Enya's. So and the next picture. So she's very young. Ah, uh, <laughs> and I've got one more where she's she's younger still, and there she is. Can you see? Do, do the names come out? Yes, you can see them. Can it? Good. <laughs> so it's springtime. There's life that's emerging after uh, the winter, and in families also. Not just the families of, of, of the birds, but in, in families of human beings, new life is emerging. And here is little Enya, right at the beginning of, of her life. Well, how old is she now? She's one. She's got a whole year's worth of life, but uh, many, many more ahead of her. So we're here to celebrate that this morning. And as part of that celebration, I'm going to ask Robert to come up, and uh, who, some years ago, Robert is Enya's dad, and... Uh, Robert wrote a poem, and he's going to bring that poem. It's not about Enya, because he wrote it before she was born, but uh, please. <clears throat> this uh, poem was born out of being lucky enough to see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, from Isla, one of the Western Isles of Scotland, on a cold, very dark night. Out of the midnight sky on this moonlight, moonless night came a shard of pale blue on this starry night. Focused above me, a pale umbrella of light, fleeting and ephemeral, cloudy wisps in the night. Watch closely as they come and go, almost unreal like melting snow. A pale blue turned red and darker red still, but through it all the stars shone still. Then little by little, brighter and brighter, the sky began glowing an umbrella of light. Then the giant curtain was gone, vanished into the night, and in its wake a single beam of light like a glowing flame over the small croft, it warmed the sky on this cold night. Flickering brighter, the red turning darker, changing intensely, a light in the night. As fleeting to greet, the fire was gone, but lingering softly on this starry night. Green plover were calling, snipe drumming too the wind are whistling to see this great hue. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> oh, we get a clap. <laughs> I, I don't normally get that. <laughs> Good. Now we're going to come to the heart of uh, our time here this morning with what uh, we call the dedication. Let me just explain, because if you're not familiar with <clears throat> something that happens in some parts of the Christian church, but it's different by a little bit from other parts. Um, I think nearly all, all parts of the church would want to recognize the importance of the birth of children and, and, and commend them to God. And some people do this through what they call christening or baptism. And, uh, but because we are a Baptist church, and for us baptism means, and I'll explain it, because underneath me here, there's like a mini swimming pool. And, um, <laughs> whoa, like a mini swimming pool. And, and then when somebody is older, and they make the decision that they want to be a follower of Jesus, 
they signify that or indicate that by coming down the steps and coming into the water, which is about this sort of deep, and then going down under the water and rising again. And, and it separates what was gone before to what's coming afterwards. Now, because we do that with people that are older and they can do it, uh, knowing what they're about, we, we keep this part of the service to what we call dedication. And we dedicate the baby or the child to God's love and to care. And we also dedicate the family equally to that love and care. And we dedicate the whole of the church as well as part of the, the wider family in which all this happens. So there's some bits I want to read. In the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome Kelly and Robert and Mark who come to give thanks with us for the gift of Enya. Jesus was presented by his parents in the temple. In turn, he took younger children in his arms and blessed them. Celebrating the gift of life and the faithfulness of God, we covenant together as parents and as a church, making promises before God for the sake of this child. Here we share joy over the gift of Enya and praise God, the giver of all life. Concerned about the dangers <clears throat> of this world into which she is born, we here pray in trust that God will bless and protect her. Here we confess and proclaim that all our hope rests ultimately in Jesus Christ and the best we can want for our children is that they become his true disciples. And so it certainly were my hope and prayer that when the years have passed that Enya might want to come and experience baptism in the way that I've just described. Scripture, the Bible that is, calls us to see in children a sign of the kingdom of God. Enya is a living sign that God welcomes us without condition, lavishing love and grace on all who come to him with empty hands and with open hearts. And there's a brief Bible reading. It comes from the Gospel of Mark. These are the words. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them, but when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. And we're going to be following um, in that practice that he began 2,000 years ago. But... Uh, now, uh, a brief prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, the Creator of all things, the Giver of life, we praise you. You are the loving parent of every human being. And joyfully, we thank you now for the gift of new life in the birth of this child, Enya. For all that you have given and will give to us through her, and the possibilities of her new life. We thank you. Heavenly Father, you are also the redeeming God who takes our mistakes and failures and turns them into symbols of your love and grace. Take us all with all that we have been and all that we have done and help us to go forward with your forgiveness and your help into the good future you desire for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to ask Robert and Kelly to come up and stand with me here. And then you're, of course. <laughs> And firstly, uh, Robert and Kelly, do you thank God for the gift of your child? Good. And do you promise uh, to do your best to bring Enya up with the love and goodness and wisdom and patience, all, all of that that you can? Thank you. And uh, she has a brother and a sister who are very much older, but would they like to come out? That's Jordan and Charlie. And I'm going to ask you a simple question to which you reply, we do, if, if you agree with it. 
And it's that. And do you promise to love and care for your baby sister? Thank you. And uh, now, what names? I know they're up there, but, uh, but as part of the service, what names have you given to this child? Which one's going to go? <laughs> Right, that, that's good. And uh, so thank you. Now, this is going to be the tricky bit because I'm going to ask <laughs> whether I can take, take her because this is where we come to the blessing. And little Enya, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to bring you around in a minute and show you to everybody. Ah. But, <laughs> and uh, Enya, we rejoice for you are God's gift to us, to the family in particular, but to everybody as well. Grow strong in every way that you, that you may be a source of joy and hope and strength to all those that come to know you. May in due time you come to know the love of God for you and to be able to love him in return. And here we are. Enya, the Lord bless you and keep you. Enya, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And yet the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace this day and always. Amen. And we're going to walk around the church. If the, anyone wants to come with me, the younger ones, you're very welcome. But this, this is Enya. Look at this. They're all looking at you. <laughs> Should we go around here? <laughs> There we are. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there she is. Now, oh, there's people up here as well. We'll go over here. Here she is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and up on the platform, so no one misses out. There they all are. All those scary faces. You were, you were perfect. You were perfect. And uh, now I want to speak to the whole of the congregation and gathered here as members of this congregation and as representatives of the wider Church of God, do you promise, whenever and wherever it may be possible, to offer Enya and her family your love and support and being faithful in prayer, will you share your faith with her by word and example? If you can, assign, if you can agree with that, would you please show it by standing? So there are all your supporters, family and Enya especially. And whilst we're standing, we finish this part of our service with one further prayer. Faithful God, in faith and hope we entrust to you Enya's future life as it stretches out before her. Protect her in moments of danger. Reassure her in moments of doubt. Strengthen her as she passes from childhood to youth and from youth to the life of an adult. And grant that when understanding comes, she may confess you as her Lord and Saviour. Surround her with your love expressed in people who will care for her. And give her those with whom that love can be shared. We mention in particular Kelly and Robert and Mark and their families. Give to them wisdom and courage, laughter, peace, joy, and the love that endures all things. <clears throat> God of love, we rejoice in your faithfulness. We thank you for the gift of life and for life in families. Guide and guard Enya all her days. May your love hold her, your truth guide her, and your joy Delighter, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please, you may all sit down. I'm going to share one more piece um, from the Bible. It's going to come up on the screen in just a second. This comes from the Gospel of Matthew. You're, you're aware that there are four accounts of the life of Jesus, and there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we call them the Gospels. And this comes from, from Matthew. And it starts off, at that time, the kingdom of heaven. Let me just explain very briefly. The kingdom of heaven is a phrase that Jesus used 
also called the kingdom of God. It means the same thing, and it is not about heaven as such, but it's about when heaven touches the earth, when the, when the reality of God and his presence really makes a difference here on earth, in our lives and beyond. So it's about God coming among us. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, or there's another translation which puts it better, ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy, hope you don't, fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgin stroke bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil at midnight and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins, bride, bridesmaids who were ready, went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. What's it all about? What's that really saying? And as I've suggested, or hinted at at least, it's based in part on the story of the parable of the ten, I call them bridesmaids, parable that Jesus told. And it's based also in part upon the account of when Jesus, on what we sometimes call Holy Week, was approaching the end of his earthly life. And he came into Jerusalem on the Sunday, where on the Friday he was crucified, and the following Sunday he rose from the dead. He came on that first Sunday into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and the crowds that were there were crying out, Hosanna. Blessed is he, good is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. And, and that song brings those sort of two themes together. The story of the, the wise and the foolish bridesmaids and their, their lamps, either with or without the oil, and then the cry of praise to God for them. The song, however, departs slightly from the meaning that Jesus had in mind when he told the parable. Because Jesus used to preach... Or, or speak or teach, very frequently in terms of parables. And parables are not designed to make complicated things easy to understand. It's rather the other way around. They, he, or rather he, he told things in parables because they were like a riddle. And you had to go away and you could have the story, but you had to think about it and think, what's he getting at? But because they were simple stories, you could remember them. But because they were riddles, you had to do the work and think, what is he getting about? Who are these ten bridesmaids, some wise and some foolish? And at the end, there is the clue, as Matthew tells us the story. Keep watch and be ready. Because Jesus gave this parable, at least that the way that it's put into Matthew's gospel, very close to the end of his earthly life. And the death of Jesus wasn't something that overtook him as a tragedy. It was something that Jesus knew was awaiting him. There was an inevitability about the fact that the, the authorities, etc., would turn against him and, and want to get rid of him. And he was saying to the crowds, look, just like those bridesmaids, don't be caught out. Don't let this... Don't let this take you by surprise and leave you wondering, where are we and what's happening? I'm telling you now, keep ready and be watchful. Because when it happens, you won't be caught out. Well, as it happened, pretty much everybody was caught out when he died. His disciples that knew him better than anybody ran away and fled. 
but they were able to reflect afterwards. Jesus knew what it was all about. He knew why he had come. He knew what was going to happen to him. He knew that he would die, and he also predicted that he would be raised from the dead. The song, however, leaves all that in the background. But it says about this oil. It picks up on this. And I've got a couple of pictures of, of an ancient uh, Jewish... They're going to come up in a second or two. There we are. That's what these things were like. Um, uh, an ancient oil lamp. The, the, the bit at the back is, the, is where you hold it. The hole in the middle is where you pour the oil. And in the front there's a wick that uh, is burning. Now, if I do this, will it come up in the second one? And there we are. Look, it's, it's lit. And the only way that it's going to work is that you put oil into it. And if you don't have oil, it won't light. It's useless. Of course, the other thing about that story was, and it's very strange, that uh, the bridegroom was coming at midnight. I'm not sure whether he'd already been married earlier, but certainly the wedding banquet was going to be held in the depth of the night. And the bridesmaids had the responsibility, there were ten of them, of coming and bringing their lamps and positioning them around so that in the dark they could enjoy their food. Very different kind of celebration from what we would have today. But uh, that's what Jesus was, was um, touching on when he told the story. And the people of his day would have understood all these things and it would have made sense to them, even though the message was, was hidden like a riddle within the midst of it. When Kelly said to me, I say about 10 days ago, that that song meant a lot to her when she was younger, immediately I thought, there's something here that's very important and that we can just develop very slightly this morning. You see, the oil, this is the way that the song takes it, the oil isn't just the source of the life. The oil is, is rich. The oil has properties that, that we all need. That we all need something within our own lives. That Enya needs something. The love of God that covers her. The care of God through the years. The inspiration of God as she grows. Some of that will come through, through you, the, the families and friends, and the church. So God works both with people and, and as well as. And it's the inspiration that comes there. The love and the joy and the peace that God can give. And there's a challenge in this. Because as human beings, we, we incline to want to go our own way and do our own thing. And we close ourselves off to the wonder of the goodness of God. And the challenge of this is simply that as we open our lives, open our hearts, open our thinking, if you like, to the possibility of God, to the meaning behind the stories that we share Sunday by Sunday, we discover that there is a reality there and that it makes a difference. And I'm not going to take up time now, but I can tell you, I'm, I've just turned a couple of weeks ago 72 years of age. And I've been a Christian since I was a teenager. I was actually brought up in a family that took me to, to church and to Sunday school, so I've known it all my life. But I've known the goodness of God. I've known the faithfulness of God. Perhaps the word that stands out more than anything in my experience has been the kindness of God. God has been unbelievably kind to me in numerous ways. And there are other Christian people around here that I know would say the same. God is good. He can supply the oil. He can supply the richness. He can give the flame that we want, that gives us joy and peace and hope and love and these things. This is the gospel. And, and I'm so pleased. Kelly, where have you gone? <laughs> are you here? You keep moving around. I don't know where you are. But, uh, but I'm so... And, uh, and there's Enya right at the back. I'm so pleased that you've, you've brought you and your, your child and your family to be with us today. Um, you are truly and totally welcome. And it's been an absolute privilege and delight to, to embrace all of this within the gospel of God's love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
But I want to, I want to finish with the blessing that uh, I and you with me, I'm sure, pronounced upon little Enya. But I'm going to miss the word Enya out and include everybody within this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace this day and for always. Amen.